you can have something of value, but ultimately it's up to God to decide what he has planned for us. You know, we have ours, he has his, and his always prevails. I come from a low-income family, so thank God we're not poor, but we also weren't rich. You know, we, we I grew up from like not having Wi-Fi, no TV, no cable to watch that TV, no printer, bro. We didn't have nothing we had a nice house but we didn't have we weren't rich you know at the same time you know so i was fascinated with rich people you know the the fame the money the accolades but recently god led me to watch hector el father this reggaeton artist very popular in the early 2000s mid 2000s and he just inspired me and made me think man all of this is worthless you know he had millions fame the, the girls the money but he wasn't happy he was suicidal depressed and it just made me think, rethink my ambitions of like what I should strive towards. God has had a lot of grace and favor towards me, you know, man. I was dropping off my coworker to his apartment one day. And we started talking about our past jobs and we ended up on how did you get the job at Tremont? The job changed my life for the rest of my life forever. It just changed my life during that moment, during that time. And I told him, man, it was all God, man. Grace, you know, like how it happened was, man, it, there's no way I could have gotten it by myself. It just happened through grace. You know, God does everything for a reason. As the word says, he has a plan for us, a future for us. Plans to prosper us and not to harm us. This is what Jeremiah 29 11 says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Want to learn how I got the job? Man, and not. And not only to talk to it all, man. That's how I got the job, how I landed the job. Um, you know, I guess one day, me and my mom and my aunt were in the room one day. I just so happened to be in the room that day. And my mom was telling her like how I was needing or looking for a job. And so my aunt just happened to tell me about Dream on this place. She told me about two jobs. One job I think was in pipes or doing something like that. I'm like, yeah, no, definitely not it. But then she told me about Tremont, this retirement center. And she said, you know, I like, I know about this place. I didn't make it, but you could try. So my aunt had a lot of love for me to even give me the suggestion, to give me all the opportunity to even go look for the place. And so that's how I got the job at Tremont uh, for the first time ever working. I believe this was like 2018. And so I told my cousin about it, her son, this from this aunt, shout out to Lalo. And he uh, discouraged me. He was actually, no, the place smells like piss at and stuff like that. And I'm like, bro, like stop exaggerating. So I went to go look at the place, you know, and, you know, I worked there for about a, a year to two years, for like two years almost. Then I quit and came back. And this was as a server position. And see, God builds and refines your character. You know, at first he needed, you needed to be a server to learn how to, to serve others, you know, the, the residents. And then I come back a year, two, three years later, and I, I'm a server position again, but after a couple months, uh, they put me as team lead. They gave me that opportunity, you know, so shout out to God, you know, for giving me this opportunity. And so that eventually led to like three raises within that same year, the next year, probably the following year after that. And man, it was my highest paying job to this date, you know, and so I thank God for that. And that was actually the job that gave me the opportunity, the chance to be able to buy the my first truck, my first dream truck ever, the OG, the black truck, the Silverado Cat Eye. And then it also gave me the opportunity to buy it this year, uh, the new one, because the first one, the OG, the black one got totaled, you know, so this one got, got led the way. It was crazy how it happened. I'll link the video over here on a car or on the end screen as well. So you can watch both videos when I got the OG, the black truck, and when I got the other new one, uh, better condition, uh, 06 Serato as well. 2016, I had no purpose, lack direction, anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts. And so God uh, told me, told me, you know, was it you that landed the job or was it because I picked you to work this job? And so I realized, you know what? you picked them for me you know god gave me grace and favor to be able to land these jobs you know like it wasn't because of my own strength but because of god's purpose and how he wanted to form me and develop my character the refinement you know and so i thank god every day that he landed me these jobs because it wasn't by my own strength it was by his grace his favor to be able to do that you know so god told me was it you that landed these jobs or was it because of me it's like i am control not you you're not in control i am and so that 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 paved the way for like the next couple of years make really this year made me realize wow man i'm not in control god is so i felt god telling me don't worry about the money i've sustained you throughout all these jobs the reason why you couldn't uh keep the money wasn't because uh it wasn't enough it was because i, I invested the money into fleshly desires into things that i wanted i met i mismanaged the money so god was telling me it's not because i didn't sustain you throughout these jobs it was because you didn't learn how to manage the money not because you didn't make enough, it's just you didn't know how to manage it. You didn't store your money right. God was telling me, what happens if you wouldn't have worked at Tremont? What happens if I would have not landed the job at Tremont? What happens if I didn't place you in Tremont? Well, the questions he was asking was like, would you get leadership abilities? Would you be able to pay off both trucks? Would you be able to bless others with that money? Would you be capable to handle more responsibility? And the answer was no, I couldn't. God gave, God provided. God was asking me, have you ever been hungry or starving? And I'm like, no. I've always had some type of food on the table. Guy saying, see, you have more than others in this world. 
envy is bad. Going back to always being fascinated with rich people, you know, I saved 9K, that's the highest I've ever saved. You know, I wanted to hit 10K, 30K, 50K, 100K, and then 1 million. And you know, the answer is, would I really ever be satisfied? The answer is no. Others always say yes, but the truth is they wouldn't. I know somebody who's who's made a hundred million dollars plus but wants to be a billionaire. It never stops, it never ends. You know, money just distracts you from love, family, and most importantly, God. This is what Ecclesiastes 4.4 says. And I saw that all toil and all achievements spring from one person's envy of another. This too is meaningless, a chasing after the wind. I really thank God for showing me Hector and Father's testimony. You know, it was so powerful, so impactful because that's what I've always struggled with. Money, the fame, the accolades. And he, God showed me through Hector and Father that it's really not all. Let me explain. Hector and Father was a millionaire by that time, had the fame, the accolades. But he, there was this one story where he talked about in one of his sermons, he talked about how he was, he already had many mansions, but in this specific neighborhood, there was many other artists and he wanted to build the biggest mansion, you know, so he was never satisfied. He, wanted, he already had mansions, but since he wanted to flex and front, you know, he wanted to build the biggest mansion there. Then he also talks about how he hated Sundays because that's when his peers would be like, oh no, Hector, um, you know, Sundays are for family time. So he loved Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because that's when they'd go clubbing and partying and all that. But he didn't like that on Sundays. His friends would tell him, oh no, you know, Sundays are for the family. He hated that because he didn't have a family himself. His family was broken, you know, and he also talks about this. He also hated his life wanting to commit suicide. You know, he eventually he called his brother and then on the first time, didn't pick up. Second time, didn't pick up. Third time, almost didn't pick up. But eventually he, the brother picked up the call and he told him, hey, uh, brother, can you can you come pray for me? I'm about to commit suicide. I, I don't know what I'm doing in my life. I don't know what to do. And thank God that intuition, that voice, the Holy Spirit told Hector, you know what? Don't jump off the balcony because he wanted to commit suicide by jumping off his balcony. And so he called him and he was like, nah, like uh, he called him and he was about to give up. But something told him, no, come one more time. First time, didn't pick up. Second time, didn't pick up. But that third time, God made that guy pick up, the brother pick up. And, you know, he's like, Brother, I'm not I'm not in Puerto Rico. Brother, I'm not in Puerto Rico. And the other, the, the, the brother's like, you know what? I'm also not in Puerto Rico. He's like, where you at? I'm in Madison Square Garden, one of the most popular places, uh, New York, you know, where they do concerts and all that stuff. And he says, you know what? I'm actually in Madison Square Garden as well. I'm like two blocks away. Come over here to my house. I'll pray for you. And so thank God, you know, because of that, he was able to save his life. You know, that was God, you know, using the brother to be able to pick up, to be able to give Hector the Father some hope where it's like, you know what? Give me, give me a sign to to not be able to commit this act you know and so god god delivered the brother answered eventually and we we have hector the father today you know being a pastor in puerto rico and you know giving sermons and inspiring people giving hope to others you know so it's very very a beautiful story you know to hear and you know watch i envied others i wanted the follower count i wanted the community the, the followers the accolades everything but you know, that is all worthless according to Hector and also to the Bible. It's like, it's just a chasing after the wind. Envy is so bad. It's a chasing after the wind. You'll never be happy. You'll never be satisfied because someone will always have more and that'll strive you to like, no, to have more, but there's always bigger fish than you. And so how the Bible says it's meaningless, but God doesn't want that for you. He doesn't want you to want more to strive for more. He doesn't want that for you. If you put your value on when night or until, you'll never be happy. And most importantly, you'll never be joyful. Last Sunday, our pastor was talking about how he was a little kid when he was about like seven years old. His parents, they weren't rich. They didn't have much money, but somehow they were able, they were able to get him a Nintendo console uh, during his time, you know. And so he was so happy, so excited. So he decides to call his friend that lived right around the corner to come check it out and see. And so he was the happiest kid alive, happiest seven-year-old. But then guess what happens? As soon as the friend comes around the corner, he sees that he's in a 4x4 ATV. And as soon as he saw that, his happiness was gone. His joy was gone. In a split second, envy happened. It's the same thing. I might make 10K, 30K save, but there's always a bigger fish. Someone have 200K save and they're all happy, but then they realize the person next that makes 5 million. Then that person realizes, whoa, somebody has 10 million and it just never ends. You know, it's envy. You know, it's just keeping up with the Joneses, you know. And this society has birthed us to envy and jealousy instead of contentment and gratefulness. So God asked me, are you really in control? And I'm like, nope. Not at all. He said, David, I give you many raises. You'd have to be doing better than your other old jobs. So how did you do with the money that I gave you? And I'm like, honestly, bad. I got in debt multiple times. I didn't steward it right. I mismanaged it. I overspent living beyond my means. And so my answer was that. And he's like, so was the answer that I didn't make enough? And I'm like, no, I just mismanaged what you gave me. I just didn't do, I just didn't steward what you entrusted me with. So again, God asked, did I not take care of you? And I replied, yes, you did. I just overspent. I was impatient, impulsive, foolish. So God said, see, you're not in control, nor will you ever be. I am. Obviously, he sustained me throughout all my life, you know, giving me food, putting plate on there. But 
I just didn't do my part. God did his part, I just didn't do mine. So is it really God's fault or was it mine? To be honest, it was mine. So yes, guys, remember, God is in control, you're not. What happens if you let go? Then what? What happens if your mom gets sick out of nowhere, your, your dad, a sibling, a family member, then you have to use up some money from your savings that you thought was for you. But since they know that you got money or you feel uh, guilty, you, you get them, then what? What happens if you're like, no, but I can prepare, which is true. We can prepare, but life life happens to us all. What happens if you say for 10 months, you lost your job and you have 10 months worth of rent, but then you you thought that you were going to find a job, but you didn't. Now the next two months, how are you going to do it? You don't have enough for, for the next two months of rent. Then what? You know, so it's always remember God is in control. We're not. So are you really in control? The answer is no. So keep that in mind, guys. Always follow God, serve God, because one day on Judgment Day, do you really want to be on there? And he asks you, so what did you do with your time here on earth? And then you reply, well, I was being envious. I was worried about what the other person had. I wanted more. I was striving for more. I wanted more things. You don't want that. You know, you don't want that. You don't want that. You don't want that to be your answer. Just something to think about. If you like today's video, make sure you give it a like, comment, share, subscribe. See you in the next one. Live a laugh. Peace.